Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, the direct purchase inquiry line for you to me and my crew for questions you have about this or any watch you see here on Watchbox Reviews. And today we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Sky Dweller reference 326933 in Rolex's proprietary highly anti-corrosive 904L stainless steel and yellow gold, both of which Rolex makes at its own foundry. The timepiece, 42 millimeter in diameter bowed back at Basel World 2011. It was a bit of a shock as the most complex Rolex ever made. About 13.9 millimeters thick. It's thinner than you imagine. And from lug to lug, it actually wears quite well on a small wrist. 50.5 millimeters lug to lug with just a little bit of a protrusion of a solid end link beyond the lug, giving it a cross the wrist span of 52.5 millimeters with a surprisingly broad for a Rolex and handsomely proportional 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. As you can see, Gaps underneath to vent the wrist on a hot day and avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. You have polished center, satin shoulders, polished outer faces, removable links fixed by screws as you can see. There is a lift lock system for the straight through yellow gold and steel clasp. That system allows you to disengage the beak from the hook and internally it's all of high polish. A flagship Rolex piece finished internally. That's how you know the internals of the clasp and the swing arm will be polished rather than media blasted on a flagship Rolex piece. You have easy link. five millimeters of adjustment. You take it in or take it out without a tool. It's the equivalent of adding or removing one sizable link. And then there are three divots drilled inside the clasp. So you can use a strap tool to change the anchoring point, adjust or fine tune the size. Rolling back to the case, you can see it's like a giant date just. It's not the super case profile from the GMTs, the subs, the sea dwellers, and of course the Explorer 2s. This is more like a, a Date 8 or a date just case, which means it's handsomely sculpted with compound curves, a sinuous grace, a lovely rounded profile, and gloriously tapered lugs. The bezel, fluted gold in Rolex's fashion, has the twinkle of a cut gem and the twin lock crown. You know it's a twin lock in gold because it features two dots rather than a slash. So it's a gold twin lock. Screw down 100 meter water resistance. And then on the dial, you have a yellow gold sunburst base with a matching yellow gold 24 hour second and time zone reference ring. That is one of the most important innovations in the Sky Dweller in recent years by Rolex because originally that was a tone on tone color contrast and it sort of partitioned and broke up the dial in a way that not everyone loved. So gold on gold works much better. Yellow gold hands, yellow gold Rolex crown, yellow gold applique indices. You have the Cyclops eye magnifier which breathes better on a 42 millimeter watch. It doesn't crowd the dial. You can see there is a month indicator, 12 hours, 12 months. So you're looking at the 11th month indicated by that mobile red indicator. So you're looking at right now, November, or excuse me, you're looking at the 10th month, Where's my mind today? So it is October 28th. So it's October 28th right now. What I'm gonna do is show you how this watch works. I screw out the crown and you can see in that first position, I can wind the watch, but I can't actually do anything with the watch. Now I turn the ring command bezel, one click counterclockwise, and now when I pull the crown out, I can actually adjust that calendar forward or backwards. And you can see I'm jumping between October and November as I'm able to adjust the annual calendar in either direction. So it's a bi-directional annual calendar. The annual calendar need be correct only once per year during the jump from February to March. Now, if I turn once more, now I'm controlling the local hour hand. And you can see how the watch continues to tick. I haven't hacked or stopped the movement. I can adjust the date forward, but not backwards using the hour hand. So I am adjusting the local hour now. If I turn one more click, now I engage the stop seconds or hacking mode. And when I make my adjustments, everything moves, including the 24 hour ring. So what I want to do first is I want to set the 24 hour indicator. I'm going to set it to 1400. So I'm setting it to 2 p.m. Now I'm going to turn it back to local hour adjustment and I'm going to set it to 6 a.m. So I have my two separate time zones set and if I wanted to now make one more adjustment and adjust the date to represent say the 3rd of October, I can do that. Turn it one more click clockwise and now I adjust to nothing. Screw down the crown, lock it in place again. 100 meters water resistant, always keep the bezel justified all the way clockwise just so you have a set point to restart if you need to set it. Inside the case you have Rolex, caliber 9001, 40 joules, automatic winding, 3 day power reserve, 8 beats per second, free sprung with a full balance bridge for shock resistance, handmade Breguet overcoil hairspring of a parachrome blue, blue oxidized niobium zirconium alloy. So it is not just a highly shock resistant watch with a rotor bearing, a full 
full balance bridge and a free sprung index, but it's also a very accurate watch thanks to the overcoil architecture, which allows Rolex to adjust this watch in six positions. Yes, earning a chronometer certification, but also reaching Rolex's superlative chronometer standard of timing, which is plus or minus two seconds per day, not the COSC's minus four plus six, and Rolex achieves superlative chronometer as a fully cased up watch. Impressive stuff. The niobium zirconium alloy of the hairspring makes the watch highly anti-magnetic. And of course, the timepiece is a Rolex in every regard. One of the most robust and user-friendly annual calendar GMT complications you'll ever find. Fully swimmable and wearable on a broad range of wrists. My final flourish is going to be to show you this watch on my wrist. And you can see that it's easy to wear. 42 millimeters on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It doesn't bridge across. I can recommend it because of its relatively thin profile and limited lug to lug span for a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters, maybe even 14 centimeters in circumference. Email your questions about this watch to tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Rolex Sky Dweller by Night, the Sky Dweller glowing in Rolex's in-house chromolite blue loom.